<laughs> oh yes, isn't that Winnie the Pooh? Winnie the Pooh is awesome, though. Hey, we're starting lesson three, and this is called Sequences of Rigid Transformations. And we've been talking about rigid transformations, those transformations where the size and the shape remain the same. Now we're going to talk about sequences of rigid transformations, where you have uh, a figure and you want to do two or more different things to it. Maybe you want to reflect it and then translate it. Maybe you want to translate it and then rotate it. But it's called considered a sequence of rigid transformations. So this is lesson 3A. This is on page 45 and 46 in your book. And we are focusing here on the learning target. All this lesson. This learning target is really broken up into two parts. The first part is right here. The second part is right here. So first one, it says understand that two-dimensional figure, that a two-dimensional figure is congruent to one another, to another one if the second one can be obtained from the first by a sequence of rotations, reflections, and translations. In other words, we know that two figures are congruent if you can take one and get to the other using any sort of rotations, reflections, and translations. The second goal in the green there is Given two figures that we know are congruent, describe a, a, trans, uh, a sequence that exhibits the congruence between them. Meaning, if you have two figures on a graph, you have to be able to describe how to get from one to the other using maybe a translation, seven to the right, and then a reflection over something, for a certain line or over the x-axis or something. So that's where we're going with this whole lesson and today primarily we're focusing on that first one in the blue so here's your problem for today let's read it through i want you to think about it i'm going to have you read we're going to read it through a couple times so um arachne's quilt is an amish quilt pattern made of polygons so you can see an example to the right you can use a coordinate plane to plan a quilt graph the pentagon with the vertices a b c d and e that are given there then to graph another pentagon Follow these steps. First step, translate. Pentagon A, B, C, D, four units to the left to form A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, sorry. And then number two, rotate that new shape, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin. So what is this problem about? Well, I mean, you could argue that it's about Arachne's quilt. And the fact that we're going to try to graph a little bit of a, of a pattern here. So let's read through a second time and just think about what we're trying to find out and what's important. So these are the two questions that we're trying to look at. Arachne's quilt is an Amish quilt pattern made of polygons. You can, make, you can use a coordinate plane to plan a quilt. Graph a pentagon with the vertices A, B, C, D, and E that are given. Then to graph another pentagon, follow these steps. Translate pentagon A, B, C, D, E, four units to the left. And then rotate pentagon A, B, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, 90 degrees counterclockwise. And our final question, is pentagon A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, D double prime, E double prime, the same size and shape as pentagon A, B, C, D, E? So what are we trying to f figure out? Well, that's always the last part. Are these pentagons uh, congruent? And what information is important? I would say we need our, our coordinates. Got to be able to graph our coordinates. We got to know that we're translating four to the left and rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise. And what things do we need to do this? Well, you might want uh, a graph paper. Maybe a ruler or something that you can uh, draw straight lines with. And that's really all we're going to use for right now. So, on your um, paper, there is a graph. Just keep in mind, if you don't have any lines on the graph, you can kind of find the middle as best as you can and draw it up and down. That's the y-axis, the x-axis kind of in the middle going left to right. And I want you to note something when you do that. Um, it's going to be hard to graph, uh, like for, the, for instance, 8, 0 won't fit on the graph, so you can either extend the graph a little bit, or you can go by 2's, and I would suggest just going by 2's, so you can go 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, 2, 4, 6, 
eight, negative two. Oops, let's go underneath for that one. Negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight. So that should help you graph these um, going by twos. So I would like you to pause and try it. All right, I have graphed shape A, B, C, D, E. It's an interesting looking polygon, uh, pentagon actually, but um, we're going to do our first thing now. Translate it four to the left. So if you did this already, great. Double check to see if you did it correctly. Essentially, we want to take that whole shape and move it four to the left. And remember, we're going by twos here. So it's only two boxes because each one is worth two. So my second shape, if I take E, it's going to go two, four to the left. It's going to end up right there. So we have E prime is right here. Uh, a prime will actually be right where the original E was. So I'm going to kind of draw that on top of here. That's A prime. Uh, B prime is 4 over right here. D prime is going to be way over on the Y axis. And then C prime is right here about. And I'm going to draw my shape. Note that currently it's the exact same shape and size as the original, just moved four to the left. And part two here, it says rotate the new shape, so A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, 90 degrees counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, remember, that would be going in this direction. Counterclockwise would move it one, uh, one quadrant that direction, so it's going to end up in this quadrant right here. And remember that whole shape should kind of turn 90 degrees. So if you're looking at the quadrant, it's it's pretty simple because we have two sides that are on the axes. So we're going to have two sides that are on the axes in the next one. It's just going to kind of rotate to the left. So A is going to move up to here. So there's going to be A double prime. And E is actually not going to move at all. That's going to stay where it was and where it is. That's our E double prime. Because it's on the origin. So if it's spinning around the origin, and if it's already on the origin, it just stays there. So there's one of the sides. Another one of the sides is going to match up. This uh, D is going to kind of swing around to the other axis. So that's going to be D double prime. So we have another one of our sides. And C is going to be kind of on an angle there. So C double prime. Going up over here. And I believe we've got one more. Right here. Just going down and over. And that would be our B double prime. So if you look at it, it's the exact same size and shape. Again, just rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. And if you actually look at it, it looks like a pretty cool design. If you look at the green and the blue together, it's like half a star. Um, so you can take shape like this, shapes like this and make really cool designs out of them. But that's kind of what it should look like. And the question then is, um, number one, is Pentagon, and now we're on page 46 here, is Pentagon A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, oh, sorry, double prime, E double prime, the same size and shape as pentagon A, B, C, D, E? Well, yeah, it is. Yes, you can see it. You can count. So explain, you could measure or count. But we also know that both a trans, uh, sorry, a, a translation and a rotation are rigid transformations. So rigid transformations are transformations that do not change the size or shape. And these both are rigid transformations. So there we go. All right, let's look at number two. You already know that you can transform a figure. You can also transform the image of a figure. This is called a sequence of transformations. You take more than one transformation of the original. 
So part A, you can add a prime mark. Remember, that's a little apostrophe. To the vertex labels for each transformation you perform to name an image resulting from a sequence of transformations. So basically, um, I believe mine is different than yours, so I'm going to change this. It says in yours, how many transformations were performed to get image um, whoa, whoa, whoa. X triple prime, Y triple prime, Z triple prime. Well, how many would that be? And how do you know? Well, that would be three. Because, simply, there are three prime symbols. Or prime marks. Each mark tells you how many transformations were done. All right. Part B. Figures that are the same size and shape are considered congruent. Important word there, congruent. When a figure is translated, reflected, or rotated, the image is always congruent to the original. That means that pentagons A, B, C, D, E, and A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime are congruent. And we use this little symbol right here to make it a little bigger. It's an equal sign with a little squiggly over the top. So write a congruent statement for those pentagons below. Basically, we're going to say this one, A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, E double prime, oh sorry, I missed D, D double prime, E double prime, is congruent to A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime. There's our congruent statement, saying that those two are congruent. In other words, they are the same shape and size. And finally, 2C, Enrico translates Q to, Q to figure Q prime. Q goes to Q prime. Then he rotates Q prime to get Q double prime. Explain why figure Q and Q double prime are congruent. Well, like we said before, both transformations are rigid. And trans rigid transformations don't change size or shape. So it makes sense that if you do one transformation that's rigid, it, it maintains the size and shape. Um, another one would still do the same thing. So both are rigid. All right, last thing to reflect on. How could you use a sequence of transformations to show that one figure is congruent to the other? That's the question I want you to leave with uh, to think about. And then also our learning target. Remember, remember, we're working on that blue one today. Understand that two-dimensional figure is l congruent to another if the second one can be obtained by a, from the first by a sequence of rotations, reflections, and translations. That's it. Lesson 3A, everybody. We'll see you next time.